Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk about an interesting research paper that was published back at the end of 2022. Uh, but first, please remember to like and subscribe, or if you'd like, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in, in the description. The paper today is called Larva, Pupa, or Adult, the Female Platerodrillus Case. And to understand what this is about, I first need to introduce this family of insects. So this little creature is called a lysid. Uh, or a netwing beetle. Although this doesn't look like it much to the average person, this is actually a beetle. Uh, it's just that it's elytra. Its four wings are very thin and leathery. They sometimes look a bit like a moth, if you're not really sure what you're looking at. Uh, but they are a family of beetles that are very closely related to things like lightning bugs. And in the case of the platerodrillus, these insects are extremely sexually dimorphic. So the, the adult male and the adult female look nothing alike. The male looks like uh, a typical netwing adult beetle, but the female, the female looks extremely strange. So this is the female platerodrillus, and this here is the male. And this is to scale. The male is itty bitty tiny compared to the enormous adult female beetle. And these are sometimes referred to as trilobite beetles because of their very weird body shape. And this genus of beetles can be found uh, throughout Southeast Asia. So you can kind of find them starting at the Himalayas and going down to like Malaysia. And it actually took a long time for these to even be discovered. And even when they are found nowadays, it is actually relatively difficult to determine which males go with which females when you're collecting them, it's easiest to collect them while they're mating because the males and females look so different. Uh, you wouldn't naturally assume that they were related unless you're doing some sort of DNA research. So these beetles tend to live around rotting wood in forest environments. And the females, you can see here, here, and here, crawl around uh, on this rotting wood feeding and the males will fly and find them for mating. The females are sometimes referred to as neotenic or larviform or pedomorphic, meaning that they don't seem to at least go through a full metamorphosis. They retain a lot of the characteristics of their larval form. So in the photo here, this is the female larva. When she is mature, she still retains a lot of those characteristics, specifically her body shape, her lack of wings, her leg shapes are all very larval. Her head changes a little bit, but the major difference between the adults and the larvae, at least with the females, is the presence of a functional reproductive system. But otherwise, their body remains largely unchanged. So again, this is the larva. Uh, you can see her little head up here. And this is the adult. The head, the head remains hidden. It gets withdrawn within, within the prothorax. So the purpose of this research paper that was uh, published at the end of 2022 was to better describe the morphology of the female larva and the female adult so that uh, there you could get a better comparison of the changes that happen as the female matures into the adult form. And the reason the paper is called larva, pupa, or adult, there seems to be a compressed metamorphosis. It's not a real metamorphosis, but the adult female retains characteristics of the larva, of the pupa, and of the adult. It seems like everything has been compressed into one stage. So if we start looking at the characteristics of the, uh, of the larvae of the female versus the adult of the female, you can start seeing some, some changes uh, where the adult characteristics start to come through, uh, but the larval characteristics are maintained. So this bizarre looking thing here is actually the head of the female larva. And you can see some characters. You can see an eye here. These ball, So the eyes are here, right? Uh, so on the sides of the head, kind of t farther back. And these bulbous things here are the antennae. You have the mouth part complexes, which... Uh, are very reduced. You don't have much of a labrum. If we zoom in here, you don't have much of a labrum, which is the upper jaw. You have the maxillary palp here. The mandibles aren't very well formed. Down here are the labial palps. And you can kind of see from the bottom, this is uh, what remains of the maxilla. So it's a very strange head. 
But then if you look at uh, the adult female head, you see similar structures, but things are a little different. So you, again, have the eyes on the side of the head kind of pushed back, but the mouth is very different. So you, you do start seeing some adult mouth parts. The antennae are slightly different. You have the labial palps. You have the maxillary palps. But if you remove this labiomaxillary complex off, which is what this is, uh, you can actually see the formation of mandibles. So they are chewing mandibles now on this beetle that are uh, obvious that you can see here and here in the adult stage. And then the labrum is formed. You actually do have a fully formed labrum uh, or the upper lip, the upper jaw of the beetle, although it's just one little segment and there's a little ev uh, evagination there. Um, but it's a very, very small labrum, but it is present, which is otherwise not present in the larva. The other crazy thing about this group that I've never heard of before, before reading this paper, is that the adult female has two cuticles. She functionally has two exoskeletons, one layered on top of the other. So how this works is this here is the female larval uh, cuticle. And we're zooming in, zooming in. The female larva only has one cuticular membrane, and you can see it's fairly regular. This here at D is the first outer cuticular layer of the female adult. So she has an outer cuticle and she has an inner cuticle, one layered on top of the other. And they have different structures. So this is zooming in up to, I believe, 600 times magnification. You can see there's a lot of pitting. These are sensilli. So, uh, nerve openings for the female to sense her environment. And then underneath the first layer, uh, the first exoskeleton is a second cuticular, uh, a complete cuticular layer here, which has a completely different structure, uh, different forms of pitting, different forms of sensilli. And I've never heard of this in any adult beetles, uh, but for whatever reason, this exists in this specific uh, sex and family or sex and genus of this trilobite beetle. It's very strange. Other weird differences, uh, which the female retains into adulthood, uh, are the presence of basically larval legs. So this is the leg of the larval female trilobite beetle. So you have the uh, tarsal claws, the tibia, the femur, the trochanter, and the coxa. And then this is uh, the adult female leg, which retains all of the characteristics of of the juvenile. This is really a larval leg attached to the adult females. This up in the corner are the final two segments of the abdomen, but you can see that the structure is basically the same uh, of the female adult leg as the juvenile leg, which is a very, very strange for beetles. On the interior of the adult female, you have uh, the digestive system and the heart. So uh, the gray area here is the digestive system. The red area is the heart. The hearts on, of insects run along their back, not all, not along their chest. So the heart is basically the same. The digestive system is a little different, and there are fewer mal malpighian tubules in the female, which are basically the liver and the, the uh, kidneys. But what's crazier, and this is the major difference between the female adults and the female larvae, these are the ovaries, the, all these, uh, this like bubbly sac. These are all uh, the eggs and where the eggs are formed. And it takes up the vast majority of the female's body. The, she has these enormous hypertrophied ovaries uh, and then a relatively small reproductive system in the back, but enormous numbers of eggs are produced within the uh, female adult. And so if you were to cut open one of these, if you didn't know if it was a larva or an adult, if you just cut it open, you would see these enormous ovaries within the adult female. These researchers also uh, meticulously went through and documented all of the muscle attachments, uh, both major and minor muscle attachments, which is really impressive because that is a lot of work. They also went through and did all of the major and minor muscle attachments of the legs. And finally, they did a kind of definitive anatomy of the adult female reproductive system. So you have the ovaries, the spermal theca, and the spermal thecal ducts. Uh, you have the uterus here. You have the vaginal opening here. So finally, you have a reproductive morphology. Sometimes this is very useful in determining species, uh, the reproductive morphology of both males and females when you're talking about invertebrate identification.
So overall, this was an extremely interesting paper. If you've never heard of these trilobite beetles, it's definitely worth looking at. Uh, I will link this in the description if you want to read it. It's a lot of pictures, uh, a lot of morphological text if you're interested on boning up on your morphology. Uh, and with that, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.